just gorgeous. Oh my goodness, what a blessing it was to have these blooms, especially working at night. I'm not that far away from the blooms when they exude their fragrance and being there in the dark, doing my editing and all that fun YouTube-y stuff, the fragrance would come to me. Oh, I know. Anyway, all good things must come to an end. So, here we go. Oh, and remind me to tell you a funny, <laughs> a funny story. I hope I don't forget. It's been that kind of a week. I've been a bit forgetful. <laughs> I told you it's been that kind of a week. That was all a bit dark. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, it's good to have you here, right? It is time to move my Angraecum Crestwood Tomorrow Star back to its normal position, as in it needs to go back into the direction that it is used to growing with regards to direction of light because any kind of switch in direction is a bit stressful for an orchid because what it's going to try and do is twist the leaves back as it's trying to do with this one up here. Is that in shot? Yeah. Anyway, this one is loving the idea that the light is coming from over there. So it's twisting. I don't want that stress. I have already moved the bossery because her blooms didn't last very long, but you know, <laughs> it was good to get to move her because then I've got more orchids that I can put behind her and sort of support her. I'm gonna have to figure something out. I wonder if I can manage to get her to grow a little bit more straight. Anyway, less roots on the bossery and a network of roots on the tomorrow star. But we're going to re-establish the status quo of this little section right here. I've enjoyed the blooms. I hope that you are going to enjoy them as well especially when I get around to doing the dedications. I filmed the footage, haven't had time to edit. Well, let me qualify that. I've had time, but it's been so, so cold. So I can only do so much at the computer while my hands are freezing. I'm also losing a leaf over here. Now, a year ago, I would have been concerned. I'm not so concerned about this one because the funky thing that this orchid does for me every once in a while is drop a leaf and Sure enough, the apex right here, two years ago, it started to absorb that leaf. I thought there was a problem, but there isn't. It is absorbing from the end to the middle, as opposed to from the middle to the end. That would freak me out, but we're good to go. And why it's doing that in the middle here, my only reasoning is because of how the roots have penetrated and pierced through the leaf structure at the apex. And well, it was just a little bit too much for this orchid. See, it didn't happen with the lower leaf. That's still holding on. Yes, we have some cold damage here because of the way the breeze is moving along this little pathway here. But the lower leaf here has not been penetrated and pierced by roots, whereas up here we've had major activity in methinks. That is the reason why. Anywho, let it absorb that leaf. Hakuna Matata. Also, yay, for a little bit more airflow around the stem. But yakety yak, blah, blah, blah. We gotta get some moving done. And oh my goodness, my tray is atrocious. I've been filling it up very, very regularly just to make sure that the orchid always has access to water because that is what she has when the roots face the opposite direction. The only reason this orchid was moved in her direction, not location, direction was because I wanted to enjoy those beautiful blooms and not have them pushed up here against some other orchids. So that was merely selfish of me. I got a root from my Jumelia arborescence there. Very, very interested in this tray, but that root tip is not as long as it used to be. So it's stopping its process, which is fine. It's been doing great. This little Jumelia here Oh, it's just a wonderful joy to have, and thankfully it's growing well. Yes, sleeveless, can you believe it? Sleeveless. I better be quick though, because there is a bit of a draft exactly where I'm standing, and the situation could become a little bit dicey, because while it is, you know, nice and warm outside compared to other days, it's been marvelous today outside. Yay! Cartwheels around the patio. I didn't have to walk around like a hedgehog hating to extend the extremities to, you know, anything that touched me that was cold was painful. Anyway, 
Having said that, I'm short sleeved and I'm in a draft. And uh, you know what? That can always be very, very dangerous and we could get a cold. Now, some roots have failed, but we're not going to deal with the roots today. I'm not here to sort out which roots are good, which ones we're going to cut off. That is what we're going to do when the orchid finally moves outside for her grow season of 2023. But I do need to remove some of these orchids here because I need to get rid of this tray and clean it. Oh, yes. <laughs> I almost forgot. Let me tell you. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. When it gets cold and dark, my brain shuts down, amongst other things. I'm like an orchid, I would say. My brain literally shuts down. It takes a while for me to get going. Once I get going, if I don't do it straight away or if I don't write it down, then I kind of forget it until same hour next day and I'm back to square one. Have, sorry for the jiggle. That was my pup, King Menaki. Good boy, stay. Ooh, he listened. Anyway, back to this. Maybe you don't know, maybe you know, but I have been cleaning media. A lot of media, lava rock, lacquer, etc. And I know I have three catch trays, small, medium, large. <laughs> Back to my eyeballs aren't working and neither are my brain. <laughs> I've been working with two catch trays and I've been wondering where is my third catch tray? And you would think that I never ever come to this part of my growth space and pick up on the fact that my third catch tray is here for my Ed Graycomb roots. I am, I'm telling you, true story. I, I can't explain it. But the other day I was like, where is it? I was looking everywhere for this catch tray. And it's not as if I'm using this catch tray only for the moment that my Ed Graycomb roots are facing in that direction. It's, <laughs> this is a winter feature for the Ed Graycomb roots. It's not something that just happens sporadically. I know. Excusez-moi. Anyway, having said excusez-moi, I'm just going to say excusez-moi to my tripod as I weave my way around here. <laughs> yeah, that's my funny story. I don't know. I, I guess you had to be there. Anyway, let's get these orchids out of the way and move my and Grey come back. And oh my goodness, there's a water drop on my cerula. Oh eek. Oh no. Not in the crown. Not in the crown. Okay. Thankfully, not in the crown. But dangerous nonetheless, my summer bloomers are struggling. And uh, when I see that, I sort of like alarm, alarm. <laughs> stop what you're doing and get that dried off. Meanwhile, I'm not going to stop what I'm doing right now, but I'm just going to find a place for this Tolumnia pomegranate. And I'm going to put the cerula up by the terrace door, which is of course open, and let it get some fresh air. Hopefully it doesn't blow out of the pot because those roots are compromised in the pot as well. It's not stable in there. Ooh, and I get to clean this horrible, horrible, what is supposed to be a humidity tray. Anyway, first things first. This should be relatively easy. Putting it in place was <laughs> somewhat laborious. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Yeah, I've got to make sure that nothing drips on the orchids underneath. Oh, hang on a second. Don't cut corners. Don't cut corners, get everything out of the way. I hope I remember to do a little bloom intermission because my tetragonum is going bonkers. Surprise, surprise. Anyway, let's, let's just focus on the task at hand. I have to be super careful. I've got, as you can see, I've got <laughs> Orchid Top collection down there. Yes, it is breezy, but I am so cautious about any water dropping into any crowns. I've lost a Renanthera monachica. Whoa, whoa. Okay, sorry, I just dripped some water on King. <laughs> he didn't care. Let me put that back and make sure that nothing is dripping on the orchids underneath. Just to be 100% sure. Really don't want any crown rot. I lost the monachica once, my original monachica, and I had no idea why it had stem rot. So I'm just making sure that all the water that is sort of on these roots is not ending up on the orchids. Nope, we're fine. Okay, I'm gonna change the angle because me walking with that tray of water around you guys, <clears throat> we're gonna bump into each other. <laughs> Clumsy klutz. Le klutz. Not only brain, not only brain, 
I don't just have to deal with brain farts, but also the klutz within me is still very much alive and kicking. Now, this was the easy part. <laughs> Wait, think. I'm going to put the crest wood onto the stand here to my left. I'll make space like that. And this morning, whoa, breeze. Not for nothing. Not for nothing, I have to wait for that to stop, otherwise I don't know where this flap is going to go. Bossery roots. Oh, I'm telling you, nothing is as straightforward, is it? Nothing is ever that straightforward. There's always something. Okay, now we should be good to go. I remembered this morning that I was going to do this today, so she didn't get any water in her tray. <laughs> Compared to the last time when we switched her around, everything went sloshing everywhere. So I did learn from that mistake. There we go. This is going to be much needed for all the media. Oh, grossness. Ick. Disgusting. I have all these little birds coming through here. As much as I love them, they make such a mess, such a big mess. They fertilize my orchids, so I'm grateful to that. But every time they miss a pot, it goes elsewhere. And that's what I don't like, the elsewhere. If they could just, you know, stick to, you know, in the pot. Just put your fertilizer into the pot and we're good. That's all I ask, really. It's not that hard. There's plenty of pots. You shouldn't miss. <laughs> aim properly there we go they're probably going to come flying through and go whoa what's going on <laughs> all right here we go let's bring the spaghetti monster back into position let's go coming through coming through careful Achtung, Vorsicht. <laughs> here we go Probably had my chubby arm in the way there. Pretty much just putting my crestwood back where it belongs. Actually, how it belongs even makes me feel a lot better that I've got the right direction of growth reinstated. There we go. And now let's see if there's still some sense in the couch tray with the roots that are alive. If we can still do that because if not, then there's no reason for that anymore, just to provide some ambient humidity, that's all it's going to do. And I don't see it to be benefiting at all with the roots that were in the water before, but that's okay. I'm just gonna put some water in there for the benefit of humidity. And we'll see what happens. This is plain RO water. And, oh, I'm just enjoying the visual of it being nice and clean. <laughs> the little birdies are gonna come back and that little visual will be a thing of the past. There we go. Now, let me just show you, maybe you can see how this leaf, as I mentioned at the beginning, this one, you see how it's turned? Just in three weeks, it decided, cause it was still fresh. Yeah, I'm gonna move towards the light. Don't want that, too stressful. But I'm loving how my bossery is growing up nicely. I love the distance between the stems. Seems like the dark times, as you saw right at the beginning before I switched the light on, that is the light that they've had on sunny days. Now imagine on the cloudy days. And I did promise you a little bit of a bloom thingamajig. So let me get my tetragonum because she's just going nuts. This is something that she didn't do last year in 2022. But you know what? She's sure making up for it now. I'll get you down. I hope you can see that. Check this out. Okay, this bloom is a goner, but she has been in bloom the last four weeks. The blooms don't last that long on any given time, but because they keep blooming again, it gives the appearance that they have a long bloom duration. So this is her second flush. She didn't do two flushes for me last year, so I'm very, very hopeful that this year in 2023, and may just get two growths out of her. So here we have three, a very old cane with one, very, very old cane, another bloom, shouldn't be blooming according to my opinion. 
a very old cane with a bud. And my goodness, you guys, check this out right at the end here. The old, one of the oldest canes she's got, the teeny tiny second to seedling sized cane. Also in bloom. And these canes here did bloom as well. Those blooms are already spent. But isn't that awesome? I love this orchid. I was a bit disappointed with her performance in 2022. I didn't get a new growth at all. But in 2022, I didn't get two flushes of blooms either, which is what she normally does. So I'm very hopeful, keeping fingers crossed that we have two growths coming in 2023 so that we can watch how quickly they grow. Fun video I did a long, long time ago. I'll link that video in the description if you want. Have a look at the growth habit and the speed at which they grow of a Dendrobium tetragonum. Mine is the variety Giganteum. Anyway, there's one more thing we have to do before I'm done with this project, but I have to scooch you back and I have to get up off my knees. You don't want to be around when that happens. I'll be right back. <laughs> but while I get up off my knees very slowly, <laughs> Go ahead and like the video and subscribe while you're at it. I would so appreciate your support. Thank you so, so much. <coughs> Remember I said that the klutz in me is still well, truly alive and kicking? <laughs> yeah, I have to put an obstacle in front of those roots because if I don't, it's going to be a problem. So in comes my catch-all. Wooden box, heavy duty. I put it right in front because that means I have to walk around it <laughs> protecting the roots. <laughs> and you know all of this, when we do move the Angraecoids back to the deep south, I probably will be cutting them off. But until I haven't made that decision, I'm going to protect them as best as I can. <laughs> oh well, happy to have this status quo reinstated. And with that, I appreciate that you've been here. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.